very warm welcome. My name is David Roth and I'm the CEO of The Store, WPP, and Chairman of BAV. And it's an absolute pleasure to welcome you to Follow the Sun, 24 hours of broadcasting right across the world to celebrate the launch of the WPP BAV Best Countries Study for 2022, produced in conjunction with the US News and Wharton Business School. It's a pleasure to have you join us for this session. This broadcast is going to travel right across the world, starting in New Zealand and ending 24 hours later in the USA. We have an absolutely packed broadcast today. This year's Best Country Study is our fullest and most comprehensive yet. The attitudes of global business leaders, opinion formers and citizens towards nation strength has changed dramatically in recent years, never more so than in 2022. And we'll be looking at how those changes in values have impacted overall perceptions of our 85 nations covered in the 2022 study. But perceptions of a country only tell half the story. We'll then visit 24 countries to hear what's happening from WPP experts on the ground and sometimes how perceptions of a country don't really reflect the situation. Now, our time together promises to be informative, challenging, stimulating and, I hope, fun. So, let's get started. How a country is viewed around the world is of huge importance politically, economically and socially, it has the ability to contribute to both a nation's hard and soft power. The Romans understood this well. SPQR, an abbreviation for Centanus Populosque Romanus, was arguably the first country branding. It was an emblematic, abbreviated phrase referring to the government of the ancient Roman Republic. You only needed to see the emblem, and invaded countries knew exactly what was in store for them. So country branding itself is not new, but measuring it is. Now in our seventh year, the WPP BAV Annual Best Countries Rankings measures global perceptions of countries against a series of characteristics, impressions that have the potential to drive trade, travel and investment. They also directly affect brands. The study was developed by WPP BAV, the Wharton Business School of the University of Pennsylvania and US News. The ranking is based on a large global survey which asks a range of people about how they perceive different countries against a range of key attributes. Country branding also has a significant impact on corporate and product brands. The words made in can instantly lend credibility and trust to a product or brand that a consumer hasn't previously encountered. That could be enough to convince someone to buy and beyond that, convince them to pay a premium. Likewise, made in can prove an instant turnoff if a consumer associates the country of origin with poor safety standards or sees it as being behind the times on social issues or workers' rights. But it's not just a one-way reaction. The perceptions and performance of brands abroad feedback into the development of the country itself. Additionally, willingness for corporates to invest vital FDI is also closely linked to the strength of a country's brand. As local brands and businesses succeed, they generate economic growth as well as lending further positive associations to their country's brand. There's a close relationship between how people feel about a country and their attitudes towards the brand they associate with that country. Strong countries fuel strong brands and vice versa. Think of France and Chanel. Both represent elegance, glamour and prestige. Chanel is intrinsically French and France is synonymous with Chanel. 
The same can be said of Italy and Ferrari, or Japan and Sony. In each case, brands and the countries are part of a virtuous circle. A symbiotic relationship, in fact, Germany, is a really fine example of this symbiosis in action. Germany has come to represent the qualities of durability and engineering that brands like Bosch, BMW, Audi and Mercedes have shown the world that Germany can deliver. Brands can both shape and be shaped by the perceptions of their country of origins. Japan in the 1970s was known as a cheap manufacturing base, but now respected as a world leader for quality electronics and also technology, thanks largely to brands like Sony and Toyota. South Korea has taken a similar path, with Samsung and Hyundai demonstrating to the entire world what modern South Korea is and is doing. So creating consumer predisposition in international markets that favor other South Korean brands. There's a two-way reaction and a multiplier effect for both. This year's study quantifies the impact. We see that 83% of consumers globally agree that consumer brands play an important role in defining a country's culture. 78% also agree that the country a product is made in impacts my preference to purchase it. Our annual Best Countries ranking was first launched in 2016 at the World Economic Forum meeting in Davos, the world's largest gathering of global leaders and heads of industry and influence. It's now in its seventh year, and given how turbulent the past seven years have been across the globe, enables us to see the impact of the changes. The Best Country Ranking incorporates the views of close to 18,000 individual members of the public and business decision makers, surveyed in 85 countries across the world. This year's survey was completed in mid-2022. Collectively, the 85 countries in the 2022 rankings account for about 95% of global gross domestic product per capita and represent 80% of the world's population. Individuals surveyed for best countries were asked how closely they associated 73 attributes with a range of countries. These attributes were then grouped into 10 categories that were used to calculate the best countries ranking and more on those attributes later. So come with me as we meet our first guests on our interview stage. Well, I'm very delighted now to be joined by Lord Jim O'Neill, the former chief economist of Goldman Sachs and uh, a former government uh, UK minister and chairman of Chatham House. Jim, Lord O'Neill, thank you very much indeed for joining us. My pleasure. Thanks for having me on. Um, President Zelensky has said that the price we have to pay for avoiding a third world war is going to be higher energy bills, you know, increase in the cost of living uh, and a reduction in living standards. And this comes at a time where we see from our BAV best country study that softer values sort of like you know, quality of life and social purpose are much more important in defining a nation's brand. But, but do you think mm -hmm. that public opinion at the moment will pressurize governments uh, to hold their current policies? Uh, or do you think uh, they will start to look at alternatives? Nice, easy question that you start with. Um, <laughs> you know, I don't know, um, because it is probably for my generation, never mind the younger generation, uh, the first such uh, issue of this scale and complexity that we've seen. Um, so far, it appears um, Western nations, who are the prime uh, supporters of Ukraine, of course, uh, have been happy to support the, the government's stance on Ukraine. 
and superficially um, accept the cost, uh, which is essentially this enormous cost of living shock. Um, but it remains to be seen how that passes the test of time. So uh, as we're seeing here, the government itself is almost definitely going to have to pay for the cost uh, of this dilemma. Uh, I can't help finishing my answer to this very tricky question by also pointing out that if we really want to be serious uh, about climate change and alternative energies, uh, having a permanently higher price for carbon emitting uh, energy forms is probably ultimately the sort of thing that is needed. Uh, one would imagine accelerate the desire for alternative energies to become more and more part of everyday life. Now, um, you were chairman of the Chatham House, one of the world's uh, leading think tanks. Its mission of a world that is sustainable, secure and prosperous is great. What do you feel, how far are we from, from uh, realising uh, that goal? Isn't and hasn't really worked the way it's supposed to do on the tin. So, so, so Jim, uh, what, what should the priorities of nations be then now? Yeah, so to, to, what should we do about it? You know, I, I, I've become linked to a number of things I've been involved in, a, a big believer in what I broadly call profit with purpose. And, and we need to have uh, business itself think more about uh, the societal remit of who ultimately they serve. We've lived in an era and still do of where the only thing that matters for many public, certainly publicly quoted business is the shareholder. And it's not enough. And private business shouldn't be rewarded if we don't have productivity that goes with these big gains for them. Uh, and policymakers need to be more alert to the realities of life rather than just what was in economic textbooks of the 1960s and 70s. And uh, if we don't learn from that, I have a fear that some of the dilemmas that have just blown up dramatically in the past few years out of nowhere could actually get worse. Now, we started with a hard question, so let's end with an easy one. Uh, Lord Henry, are you an optimist or a pessimist given uh, the situation we see around the world today? Uh, right now, I, I feel a lot more pessimistic than I've done for a long time. And I, However, that said, uh, you know, I've been around uh, the policy di 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 area in many different forms for over 40 years, and I've lived through a lot of crises. And the one thing I know for sure is that the crisis you're in, even though it often seems the worst you've ever been through, they come to an end. And one of the big things I've learned is never let a crisis go to waste. And indeed, the making of uh, a business, a leader, or of a country is how they respond to the crisis you are in, because it normally defines how you're going to deal with the future uh, era. So in that sense, there are, there are lots of ways of, of things that could emerge from all of this mess in a more positive way. Well, Lord Jim and Neil, um, ending uh, on a slightly more positive note than we uh, started. Uh, thank you very much indeed for joining us. It's been a, a privilege uh, uh, to hear what you have to say. Thank you very much indeed. You're welcome. Thanks for having me joining you. As we travel around the world together in our Follow the Sun broadcast, we'll be hearing news, views and insights from local WPP company colleagues in 24 of the 85 countries covered in the WPP BAV Best Country Study for 2022. Now, before we go to one of those countries, let's remind ourselves of the WPP BAV Best Countries 2022 rankings from the 85th down to the number one country.
Let's see what the overall findings of Best Countries 2022 are before we go to Peru for local insights from the WPP team there. And don't forget to download the Best Countries Metaverse Experience for even more global insights from the address on your screen. Historically, military power and finance, banks and tanks were the attributes against which we measured a country's power in the world. Not anymore. So what does all this mean? It shows that a nation focused on providing great quality of life for its people, which cares about the rights and equality, and has a focus on entrepreneurship, is seen as having the most powerful nation brand. This reflects a world today and the factors that influence public perceptions and consumer decision-making, and by implication, a nation's political policy-making. So let's take a look at those 10 factors and their weights for 2022. Entrepreneurship, 14.2%. Cultural influence, 10.4%. Power, 5%. Heritage, 3.1%. Adventure, 5.5%. Quality of life, 14.5%. Open for business, 9.3%. Social purpose, 13.5%. Agility, 14%. Movers, 10.6%. So, it's clearly no longer just tanks and banks that give a country influence around the world. Softer power, which comes about as a result of entrepreneurship and cultural exports, is increasingly making an impact. Peru, the richest country in the world. They say it is written in the Book of Destiny that Peru has a great future. This statement by Antonio Raimondi is more valid today than ever. We invite you to visit a country where wealth is not measured in terms of money, but with experiences. Experiences that are worth more than all the gold in Peru. It suffices to go along the Amazon River, the longest and widest in the world, to start experiencing our wealth. It represents one-fifth of the planet's riverine discharge and carries more water than the Nile, the Yangtze, and the Mississippi combined. A liquid treasure protected by a jungle so rich in biodiversity that some of its species have yet to be classified. The Amazon jungle is home to 4,000 butterfly species over 3,000 freshwater fish species, 1,700 bird species, millions of insects, and 20% of all primates on Earth. Or to sail across Lake Titicaca, the world's highest navigable lake at 4,000 meters above sea level to enrich our eyes with the colors of its skies and the beauty of its floating islands and the Wiñay Marca Archipelago. Or to walk along the same paths once traveled by members of one of the world's greatest empires, an empire that presented to the eyes of the world a treasure greater than its own legend, the true Paititi. Culture also has a high value in Peru. The first university in Latin America was founded here. We house 12 cultural heritages of humanity. And celebrate over 3,000 traditional festivities every year. 
We have Vallejo with his Black Heralds and other poems, Chabuca singing her emblematic lyrics, and Vargas Llosa narrating the war of the end of the world. All of them highly valued in verse, song, and prose. And if food is the topic at hand, Peru is on everyone's tongue. This country's cuisine brings together the diversity of our ingredients and our people to prepare the most delicious dishes in the world. Dishes made with so much talented care that they enrich our palates while they feed our souls. In Peru, there are 3,000 varieties of potato, 2,000 varieties of sweet potato, 350 varieties of chili peppers, 500 species of fruit, and over 2,000 species of fish. Biodiversity of ingredients and species is so big that up to 491 typical Peruvian dishes have been recorded. No wonder we have three of the world's most renowned restaurants. But Peru's greatest treasure is that it's full of Peruvians. Peruvians, Peruvians, and Peruvians from all over the world. Generous people that exude color and warmth throughout all corners of the country. With a population of 33,396,700 habitants, Peru is made up of a kind of people who never back down. People who step up. People who lend a hand when a hand is needed who come together to achieve the most difficult goals. Many numbers that do not represent money, but that do represent our wealth. Despite the strong impact of the pandemic, the advertising market grew 19% in 2021 and 11% this year. And it is even expected that the advertising budget will reach $728 million next year. Although the advertising market is always in a process of evolution, Peru is the third country in LATAM with the highest advertising growth. Only behind Colombia and Ecuador. Perhaps if we had gone to the World Cup, the story would be different. We are a country that suffered the strong impact of the pandemic and a political crisis. But we have a positive outlook for recovery. This year in BMLYNR Lima, we maintained our revenue volume, covering important reductions and budget adjustments from our most important clients. We incorporated five new and important businesses. Derco, one of the most important and big automotive group of the country. With 21 years experience, the Innovation Lab of Abinbev Group arrived with disruptive ideas and new concepts for the brand. Inca Cola, the most important soda of Peru, and Innova and UTP, two big educational institutes in the country. And we kept our margin. And if we talk about awards, this year we won two golds, two silvers, and two bronze in the EFI Awards. We got a gold in the IAB Mix Peru, two shortlists in the New York Festival. We're close to 150 people, working like 300. Diverse, creative, and above all, very committed. We became a big family who works together to bring more disruptive and creative ideas that not only benefit our clients, but magnifies the VMLY and our name and elevates the ad standards in Peru. We seek to become the next big agency in LATAM. And why not? In the world. We are sure that after this brief visit to Peru, you will be much richer than when you arrived.
Well, I'm absolutely thrilled and delighted now to be joined by uh, Dr. Stacey Graham, who is the uh, Global Racial Equity uh, Programs Director at WPP. Stacey, thank you very much indeed for joining us. Thank you for the invitation. Um, this year we see um, social purpose becoming significantly important, um, which is a good thing. Um, why do you think that's so? I believe in the survey you define social purpose around a few categories, such as caring about gender and racial equity, uh, the environment, human rights, and so forth, right? And what we understand about humans is we have an innate desire to have a reason for being. That's another word for purpose. So I, I'd say if we look at what's happened in the world in the last two and a half, three years, that is definitely catapulted into the mainstream. We have all these things coming together that are pinpointing, illustrating how we're failing as a collective. Uh, and, and do you think that failure as a collective is something that's now being exposed right across the globe? Absolutely. I, I would say that even before 2020, we could see it happening. But there's something about a restriction of freedom of movement, right, that makes people sit at home and have nothing else to do but recognize and, and look into everything that's wrong with the world, if you will. And so I think that it's on people's minds. What does it mean to be in a collective when I'm sitting at home and can't leave my house anymore? What does it mean to really be connected as a society? How do we care for the most vulnerable? And to be really honest, with COVID-19, we didn't do a great job of that. So I think people are asking different questions than they were two to three years ago. And I think I found it quite interesting to, to see the relationship between this move, I mean, let's call it a movement, coming from the population upwards. I Absolutely. Suppose. I mean, we also see that some of our uh, health officials do move more politically than we would have expected. But there were people across the world who made the decision to wear a mask even when it was no longer mandated, who stayed at home even when they didn't want to, who got on the streets for probably the largest social movement since 1968, right? It was a global uh, social movement to bring awareness to racial inequality. So I think there's a coming together even in, in times of divisiveness. Now, one of the things we've seen in the study is this sort of interrelationship between a, a country's brand and companies' brands, and we're seeing that interrelationship even more sort of uh, mingled uh, and, uh, and prevalent uh, this year. So, so what should companies do to improve their social purpose in relation to how their country is seen? That is a great question. I think that is something that they're still figuring out. But one thing we know for sure is people aren't simply incentivized by money. That's not enough to keep employees today. Uh, employees want to work somewhere where they feel proud of not only the work that they do, but the things that the company stands for. They want to see their company standing up for social issues that they personally care about. Stacey, why do you think suddenly companies are finding a political voice as opposed to purely a corporate voice? I think to an extent, we have been able to observe this shift away. When I studied, there was a, a clear connection. The business strategy has to align with shareholder value. That's all we care about, maximizing shareholder value. And there was a notion that maximizing shareholder value stood in opposition to a social purpose, if you will. Mm -hmm. And today, I think people are recognizing that's actually not true. And we increase shareholder value when we can ensure that we have high employee engagement, low turnover, and people care about what they do in the company they work for. Well, Stacey Graham, that's a fantastic place uh, to stop. Um, we, this whole topic is uh, something that uh, we are all going to have to understand a lot better uh, and not just understand it, but also ensure that uh, it's actions as opposed to merely words. But for the moment, Dr. Stacey Graham, the Global Racial Equity Programs Director at WPP, thank you very much indeed for joining me. Thank you. Hello and a very warm welcome. My name is David Roth and I'm the CEO of The Store WPP and Chairman of BAV. Thank you very much indeed for joining me in this very special Metaverse experience. 
exploring the WPP BAV Best Countries 2022 study in conjunction with Wharton Business School and US News. Here we are in the Arrivals Hall, where you'll be able to discover the key insights from this year's study relating to global trends. Here you'll also find exclusive interviews with global experts and analysis of the data. And, and what a year we've had. There have been a lot of changes from last year. From here, you can also go and visit the 85 countries that are ranked in this year's report. Each of those countries have their own individual room where you can explore a wealth of data and insights into each individual country. You might well see some surprises along your journey. And in the departure area, you can discover more about the study itself. Enjoy your trip around the BAV Best Countries 2022 Metaverse. Well, we're almost at the end of our broadcast. A big thanks to everybody from the local WPP companies who've participated. And of course, our central team that's put together all of our Follow the Sun 24 hours of broadcasting to our directors, to Indus Gupta, to Paul Reifer and our producers, Sarah Cousins and Lady Victoria Robinson. Well, all that's left for me, David Roth at WPP, to say thank you very much indeed for joining and the next broadcast follows shortly on the hour.